Hey guys, so it's Craig Cruzmar here, back with another live stream. Give me a second here, just gonna take a picture so I can upload it to Instagram. But while I'm doing that, how are you guys doing? Today I'm gonna be doing some inking and drawing some manga pages. Upload this to Instagram real quick. At least put that there. Probably not gonna put it anywhere else because I'm too lazy to. I'm just gonna check the audio real quick. I'm gonna figure out that music enough. Or too much. Hey, look at that. It's showing up at the top there. Do you guys see that? Finally. That's what it says for the comments. It actually finally started showing up, the comments. That's totally awesome. See, look at that. Nizio. Hello there. Wow, that's totally cool. Finally, finally it started showing up. So it's taking me some time to get here to draw. I'm going to take a drink of coffee and then I'm going to get started. So what have you guys been up to? I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've been up to while I draw here. Um, I haven't been up to much, but other than stuff that I've been doing while drawing or tiny bit in between while I eat. <laughs> and I got some plans. Hello there, Mr. Z Zazy. Do I vape? The answer to that is uh, yes. I actually don't really. I actually quit smoking, and that is the reason why. And um, I'm actually going to be stopping that eventually here. But yes, that's what that sound is. I do not advocate any of that. Never smoke. Vaping isn't good either. Just don't do any of that stuff. Go on to some other more lighthearted stuff other than that because I don't really like talking about stuff like that. Like, I don't really care about it. But, um, yeah, anime and manga. That is life. That is life. Okay. <laughs> Too late for me. <laughs> Hello, Pillar Vertrag. Man, these comments popping up. It's so cool. What is that? Is this? Oh, finally, they're popping up. I'm just so happy. Um, This is Clip Studio. Do you see how much easier it is for me to answer a question? Or you guys comment something and it just pops up up above? <laughs> That's so dope. That is so cool. I, I've been waiting for this moment. It's just, if you look at my other streams, it just didn't work. And I have no idea why I haven't done anything different this stream. 
just started working. But, um, I'll talk about that here in a second. Yeah, you guys can even see the comments too. You'll notice that, um, just remember there's about a 20 second delay between the time you comment and, and by the time I get it. So it would take me, you know, like 20 seconds to see your comment if you do comment. So, but feel free to comment. I may not always answer it uh, right when someone says something. If I'm really in the zone, because I want to make sure that I'm doing stuff. Like right now, inking, I can talk and ink pretty easily. Nice, you know. It's not too hard, but. Um, or the bigger messages, I may not read fast enough. But, uh, for example, I, um. Uh. Oh, oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Once I'm done inking this page, which I will try my best to get this done before, like, in a timely fashion, um, I'm going to actually be starting a fresh page with you guys, so that will be fun. Pencils, and you guys don't really see me do pencils much on here, because um, I I normally leave, like, that's, that's a lot of designing um, and... Uh, No, there's a lot of stuff that goes into, I, I wouldn't necessarily say designing, but you got to design stuff around, like, I design things on the spot, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes into the pencils that I need to, like, have full focus on, because it doesn't come completely naturally, like, natural to me yet, but even, like, long-time professionals, uh, you know, have to really focus when they're trying to think about the uh, composition. That's more so what I was looking for. Uh, yeah, the composition, all that stuff, panel layout, uh, based on what information you're getting um, from the script. Um, so yeah, I'm doing someone else's story, so it's I have to make sure I try to display it as good as possible for them, for what they want. Though I do have a lot of freedom in the scripts, uh, the way that, that the way that we format them, my scripts aren't quite the way some are. Mine are put into a way um, that I actually break it down panel by panel and and page by page. I actually don't get it uh, page by page. Um, I'm the one, they give me all the content and stuff broken down in a certain way, and then I take it and break it down from page to page and panel to panel, so, yeah, I know some comics, uh, not manga necessarily, but, I mean, manga can be broken down like that too in Japan, but, uh, comics, some comics are broken down panel by panel, you know, page by page, everything of that sort, so, sometimes they're broken down like that, that would be interesting to let you guys know. But, yeah. But, yeah, I got to get some work done today. Let's see how many people are in this stream real quick. Um, just going to check here. 18. Eh, I think I'll talk about it now. Um, so, I do want to stream on here more often. But I also don't want to scare away the people that are here for more so, like, uh, well, streams are kind of for everybody when you do the right content. Right now... I am really, I, like I said, I've, I've been on this deadline. If I haven't, if I wasn't streaming, um, you guys wouldn't be getting any content uh, if, I, if I wasn't streaming this manga because I, I don't have time to make videos. And I think this is a good way to still let you guys know um, I'm kicking. I'm still into the YouTube channel and without actually, you know, having to do video edits for something that I don't actually have time to do. I, like, I don't have time to do anything else but this right now so um, okay i'm gonna get to some comments here in a second i saw some that popped up so don't worry about that i definitely will get to them i'll answer all them questions um right now i'm just kind of focusing on this wee little background back here let's do this mm -mm. But yeah, um, so I came up with an idea to, 
to make a new YouTube channel. This YouTube channel uh, that I'm going to be making is very more so raw and just kind of experimental, just for fun. Um, it's going to be very raw. It's literally just me streaming. Like, I'll stream really interesting. I'll try to stream interesting stuff on here. Um, maybe like a panel that's interesting, that's geared towards something. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Like, I could be like, how to draw uh, speed lines, do speed lines correctly, how to draw this dynamic post, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Uh, gear for live streams on here. But I'm going to be making a channel that I will be able to go live. I'm just going to go live on there at any point, And I'm going to be uploading the nitty gritty, you know, gross stuff. Not gross. No, no. But nitty gritty hard work stuff where I'm able to just stream while I work. And it's going to be that stuff where you, like people can go there and see what kind of work actually goes into creating a page, um, how much time goes into creating a manga. I will stream at any point, really. I may stream once a day. I may stream twice a day. I may stream three times a day. I may stream every other day. But, and not every stream will be like crazy, crazy, but it's going to be more of a documenting process. Um, stuff like that. So it's, it's going to be something for those people who are interested in actually seeing these this process in the full fullness they'll be able to go there and see that i'm still going to be doing everything normally i do on this channel it's just i found myself being like man i could really go for a stream like right now i could put a stream up and i could totally use this for some content and i just i was like but i don't really want to do that on my current channel because my current channel, it's based around a certain fan base. Like, if you notice, my streams don't get as much uh, views as my normal content does, you know? And uh, that's all because I've, I've built the fan base around something a little different than just doing manga streams or a bunch of streams. Or if I did daily streams, it would completely drown out my normal content of, like, speed paints and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, so I thought about doing that channel where it really is the nitty gritty stuff and all like that. It literally has zero subscribers and it's my name and I'm just gonna make it my streaming channel. Really? It's, uh, based around the concept of documenting everything I do. This is going to be more of a speed, uh, paint and stuff like that, uh, channel. That's going to be a very raw, raw experience, this other channel. So, hope you guys like the idea. Let me know if you guys do like that idea in the comments section, whether this is live or after the live stream has gone uh, to repost. Let me know what you guys think, because I think it's a cool idea. I, I, yeah, I just find myself sitting there. I'm like, dude, I could totally go for a live stream right now. I could live stream this and it would be totally cool. Like, and there'd be no real, um, <laughs> it wouldn't be as per professional as saying this is professional, but, um, there might be times where I'm just kind of, you know, in my room. Um, my girlfriend might be there, you know, that type of thing. I'm just going to stream. It's going to be the idea of daily vlogs but for an artist, I'm not going to be vlogging. I'm going to be recording my screen. And one of the reasons why I can actually do this properly and, and efficiently is because of Omelette Arcade. And I think that's totally cool. Like, Omelette Arcade is opening up a little bit of a new world for me of what I can actually do with all this content, like with content and streaming. So it's kind of like, you know, uh, either daily vlogs or those people who do, you know, live video games, um, live gaming sessions. And, you know, they do it like for five hours a day or something like that. You know, of course, I got to eat. So <laughs> if 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 I don't eat, I'm not going to be able to draw very well. Although I don't eat as much as I should anyways. Although I did not, not even going to lie, guys. I ate a whole pizza last night. I ate a whole pizza. I am ashamed. Do not do this. You get heart attacks. But, um, yeah, I ate a whole pizza last night. 
what do you guys think about that? What, what do you take away from that? It's, it's brain food, right? No. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to look at the comments here real quick because I've been blah, 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 blabbering. I'm going to drink. I've only, uh, by the way, guys, I've only um, slept about three hours um, today. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of a little like, blah, blah, blah. hey, Vermilion Knight there. Any, everyone see Vermilion Knight in the comment section? Um, Vermilion Knight, that is one of the writers for both of the series that I'm on. Um, he is the, the, right, one of the writers for Arms of the Dragon, and he is one of the writers for, um, Ordinal Tempest. So, just letting you guys know that. Let me go up here real quick. What happens is this? Cool, okay. I love the stream. What tools like brushes and pens do you use to ink? Um, I, uh, these questions are always so hard for me because I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I just kind of like make a pen. Nothing too crazy, but, um, I don't know. This is the pen that I use right here. Um, it's actually a pretty standard pen. It's based on the G pen that's on here. It's just, I can go right here and I'll show you my settings. This is literally all you have to do. This right here. If you do the, take the G pen from here and you do these exact settings, you'll get what I have. But um, this is actually my background pen. So I'm going to show you my, this is what I've been using for my G pen. I switch it up sometimes, but uh, yeah, this is what I use for my G pen. So you can do these exact settings and uh, you'll get the G pen that I use. Other than that, I don't really use much other brushes or pens. I do use this brush for, um, it's in this section, the India ink. Um, it's the rough one. I use that for some of the shines and blackouts. So let me see here, Kuzmari, if I follow art school, will I be able to learn value every... Um, okay, so the way I like to go about college, so this person is asking about, does the, essentially, do you have to go to college to learn illustration and all this other stuff? Um, and basically, um, I, no, I don't think you have to go to college for it, but you would have to make sure you have the right drive to actually research what you need to know. Um, I consider college being like, this is, okay, this is your skill that you want to get into. And um, basically college, uh, okay, so the skill is basically you're trying to find the skill in this treasure chest. That's how I look at it. Basically, there's this treasure chest, which is what you're trying to learn, and you're trying to find this treasure chest. Basically, a college has the map. So basically, they teach you things that um, will help you get there faster. They basically give you the map to the treasure chest. Um, if you're doing it on your own, you'll have to look up your own maps instead of the maps being given to you. You actually have to go out of your way to look for it yourself. But, um, yeah, colleges, no, you do not have to go to college to learn this stuff, but they do have a very focused, um, environment. So if you're learning concept design, that teacher is going to teach you concept design. If you're not in college, you're going to have to look up and try to find the good stuff within the mess on the internet of concept design. But no, it's not completely needed. If you work really hard and do all the studying without college, um, yeah, you may not be $20,000 in debt or more. <laughs> so, depending on what college you go into, even more. So, yeah, just, yeah, it's it's possible. You just have to have the right drive. Um, and he does an awful job every time. Oh, God. Get out of here, John. It's king of hard to watch your streams when here 
is like 2 a.m. Oh, <laughs> sorry, man. Well, um, like I, I was mentioning about my other stream, I might be streaming at some very weird time. So I'm going to hopefully that channel will do its own thing. But yeah. Have you seen the Todd McFarlane Inc. drawing videos? I've seen some Todd McFarlane videos, but none of them really pop into mind. I saw one about drawing a head, and I saw some other ones, but yeah, this stuff's actually pretty cool. I, I'm actually not a big comic fan, but I do really like um, watching like those big people because they their styles are so interesting, so intricate, and... Um, yeah. Up here. Um, but yeah, I've actually been watching a lot of Jim Lee lately. So, um, thanks for doing. But like I said, I don't really, I haven't actually read read any of his comics. But um, I I do really I like his art, and I don't know. I don't know. I've been finding it really inspiring. But normally I'm into, you know, like, Naruto, Kishimoto, Takshiobara, all that type of stuff. Manga more so. Um, let's see. Thanks for doing those stream. Yeah, no problem, James. Uh, yes, I'm quite early this time. <laughs> well, it's good to have you here. Love your Tokyo Ghoul drawings. Are you watching the re-anime or manga only? Um, I actually have not read the manga. <laughs> And, I, okay, I read some of the manga. I watched the anime the first season and part of the second season. I know that sounds crazy. And you guys are going to be like, what? And you're doing Tokyo Ghoul drawings? Yeah, I would do Tokyo Ghoul drawings. I loved that first season, even though it doesn't follow the manga. I know if I was a manga fan, I'd be pissed at the anime. So I understand that for you guys. But I do want to read the manga. And I, I, I really want to read the whole thing. And Tokyo Ghoul Re manga looks freaking awesome awesome so i really need to get into it but i'm going to be completely honest i haven't read manga in quite a few months i look at them all the time i just don't have time to really read them <laughs> kind of crazy um but i i need to honestly it's just time management i need to learn to be able to um, actually manage my time well enough. Well, not necessarily manage it because, I mean, I'm just working all the time. I just need to carve out like 20 minutes to half an hour a day to recharge myself because sometimes I'll go months without just even reading any manga, anything creatively, you know, inspiring. And that's stupid. Like, why would I do that? But... Yeah, so, um, let's look here, da, 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 da. yeah, sounds great, oh, what about the, the stream, another stream channel, I adore the idea of being able to see the whole process, thank you, I'm glad you guys uh, like the sound of that so far, so, um, I'll definitely let you guys know the channel, um, I mean, I could put the link in the description, I don't know, it's, the, the channel's name is Christopher Crady, Christopher K-R-A-D-Y, um, it's literally my name, and I'm just going to be streaming on there. Uh, the streams won't start until, I don't know, probably later tonight or tomorrow, because I had to activate the streaming, and it takes 24 hours for them to actually activate it, or else I would have already been streaming on there today. Um, let me see. Man, I used to eat <laughs> entire zones, <laughs> like, every night. John, so that's why you look so bad. No, I'm kidding. John doesn't look bad. All right, so, and then... Hello, hello. I normally eat two pizzas. What the... <laughs> what size are these pizzas? Pizza is life, dude. What manga is that? Um, This manga right here, it's Arms of the Dragon, published with Norris Caesar, uh, illustrated by Moa and... Um, written by Marcus Johnson and John Lawrence, or created by Marcus Johnson, uh, whichever way, it's created by Marcus Johnson and written by John Lawrence and him, John Lawrence and Marcus. Okay, I'm reading too many comments here. Um, 
and I need to get to work. I will get to all of them though. Though I am kind of worried about getting to the point on this channel where I won't be able to answer all the questions or read all the comments like it'll pretty much just become like a stream of me talking and not drawing and I'm gonna have to find a in between there you know I'm gonna have to find some sort of in between where I know when to do what But yeah, I've been watching a lot of Jim Lee live streams lately, and I don't know, it's just interesting, because, you know, as a person who loves someone else's work, like, when you love someone else's work, and you're sitting here imagining what kind of work they do, and then you actually watch a stream and hear what they're talking about and the process and the troubles they have, you realize sometimes... You know, it brings you in a different state. And I already pretty much knew what his process would be going to be like. But there are some things I was surprised about. And that's one, that's some things that I like about those, those raw streams. That's just kind of like, it's really fun, you know? I do wish that I had like a cam that could show me. But then, then you would see my crusty, crusty face. Anyways, I need to continue to ink this baby. Mm. But yeah, I'll probably add the link to the channel in the description um holy crap i got four new subscribers since uh i last looked well if any of those new subscribers are here right now thank you for subscribing thank you for subscribing guys i appreciate it a lot a lot a lot a lot we are gonna hit ten thousand soon guys that's crazy huh I, I always imagine getting to 10th. I know it's not anything big at all. Like, at all. Compared to, you know, like other channels. But, me specifically, um, my cap, this, this is my cap at, you know, like how many subscribers or followers or whatever. This is the largest following that I've ever had is my YouTube channel. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm just surprised, like, you know, I don't even have, have as many followers on <laughs> DeviantArt for the love of God, but then again, I've posted more on my YouTube channel, I have more incentive to post here too, it's just more fun, but, um, especially when it comes to streaming, streaming is really fun. But yeah, this is crazy. The 10,000 mark is going to be my first 10,000 of anything follower-wise. So that's why it's so kind of big for me. I'm like, oh, shoot. Finally, somewhere, somehow. Like, my Instagram only has like 2,000-something people. Though it's been growing uh, faster recently because I've been posting more. And if any of you are ever wondering, how do I grow my audience? It's literally... The answer is just create content. Sometimes it's about quantity over quality. But, I mean, obviously, if your quality is complete trash, then you won't get as much. But, 
the reason why qual quantity is important over quality sometimes is that the way the algorithms work, if you don't create enough content, it will get those one good posts will get drowned out by the millions of other people posting crappy stuff. So, <laughs> or, or really good stuff because there's a lot of really good people out there, but there's a majority of people that um, have overconfidence and for some reason they think like they're the best and they, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's up with those people. Be humble guys, be humble. Because everything that I make, I feel like looks like trash. And that's complete honesty. Like, I'm I'm okay with this face right here. But uh, the rest of it, I hate. This hand looks like it's mangled. Um, yeah. I'm pretty upset with it <laughs> right now. <laughs> but there's not much I can do. Um, let's see. Shoulder would be landing right here. This would be going that way, so there would be a little bit more. Let's see if I get a little bit more perspective of this arm. I could have just left it the way it was just there, and it would have been completely fine. But I wanted to try to see if I could maybe up it a little bit more. Going to look at some more comments here in just a moment. Um, But, yeah, about that streaming channel that I'm going to be doing, I'm actually kind of interested to see where it goes. I'm interested to see if it actually grows on its own. I don't really want to do too much on this channel to advertise it or anything. Um, I want to see how much it grows. I, uh, there's this entrepreneur that talks about, um, in this day and age, you should create content. But you can't always create super, like, you can't always create quality content at the speed you need to. Like, you have to be very exceptional to be able to do that. And, um, basically, nowadays, people are really interested in documentation, the process of what you're doing. And, uh, that's another way to grow your audience. And that's what I'm looking to do with that channel. I'm looking this, I want to see with posting so much on it, I want to see exactly where the channel goes and how posting that many live streams will help it. And if it grows fast or if it doesn't, um, I want to see. Because either way, if it grows faster than this channel by some random chance, it's still going to trickle down to this channel. You know, it's all, the, the, it's all still... You know, people who like watching me do stuff and uh, do my art process. And, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, I don't like the way this is going right now. This is, this is something else. Sometimes you got to make some compromise and let it go and just be like, okay, this is how it's going to look because I, I got to get this stuff done.
whatever. <laughs> Just leave it there. All right, I'll make some comments here real quick. Holy moly, it's really... Uh, trying to find where I was. I'm here to make him nervous. Do you use Procreate anymore? Yes, I do. I use it for illustrations mostly until they start getting a better system for manga or comic artists. I'm going to still only use it for illustrations and I use Clip Studio for manga because it's more efficient. <laughs> You're watching with uh, 144p. I want to hear your wise words. <laughs> yeah, it's probably pretty blurry at 144, huh? Jim Lee is awesome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Jim Lee is really cool. Even, even though, like I said, I'm not too much in the comics, I... I really like his stuff. What do you guys think about? Uh, I I obviously can't ask that question about Tokyo Ghoul because I haven't watched uh, the new season yet. A little bit rushed, but eh, it's good. Just waiting for that. Same. Hey. Um, this stream, I'm recording it with a app called Omelet Arcade. It is this guy right here, Omelet Arcade. Um, and the energy and emotion conveyed through the style is so inspiring. I love watching you work. Well, thank you very much. I I would have to disagree that any of my energy or emotion is good, but on these, but um, thank you. No, <laughs> I should really be a person that's not bashing his own work so much, because then they eventually someone's gonna be like, dude, I shouldn't buy this dude's volume. It probably looks like crap. I don't know. I just always have higher expectations for myself than I can meet. I guess. Um, opinion on line, opinion on line weight since in comics, it's really important, but you don't see it as much in manga. Yes, that is very true. You do not see line art as much in manga or line weight per se. And uh, yeah, it's not really that important in manga. Like it, it. There is a certain amount of, like, beauty it does give it. You'll notice that there is some slight uh, variance in the line width, but not a whole lot. But that slight, slight line width variant can give it a personality you wouldn't really expect. That's why mine can go like this and get a little thinner. Little thinner. But not too thin. Not too thin. What the heck? I had a little chunky. No. <laughs> How did I learn to draw? Um, let me see if there's anything. Uh, for, oh, okay. How did you learn to draw? Um, let me get to that one first. How did I learn to draw? Um, I taught myself. Uh, I know the question is probably going to come up. But, yeah, I did not go to college. Um, I failed my first art class. And, uh, yeah, so school sucked for me. <laughs> so school, <laughs> I, I do not agree with school, but I would not also, I do not, like, say, I wouldn't want to say don't go to college. I, I would have to say you don't need college to be good, but I wouldn't say um, don't go to college. In my case, uh, I literally chose a path that was I would make this. I would make it 
or I would die trying because this is the only thing in life I cared about. And with this, I didn't have money for college. Um, and, there, and there's more to that situation that, you know, I might share one day. But, you know, I knew that this was what I was going to do. And there was nothing else that I was going to do. I mean, drawing, that is. In the drawing field. And I knew that comics or manga was what I wanted to start with. And I knew that college wasn't going to teach me that. You could learn stuff that would help you in it, but that wasn't enough for me to go to college because I would have been, you know, in crazy debt for um, essentially just gaining some knowledge that I, I, it was a good call for me because all of a sudden the internet started blowing up more and more and more and more. All these tutorials came out. And uh, to be completely honest, I didn't really watch all that many online tutorials until it came to um, painting. I started looking up some stuff about color theory because that's one of the things I, I lack the most is the understanding of colors and how they play with each other. But no, as you've heard from many, many other artists... College does not make an artist good. An artist makes an artist good. Your drive makes you get to the place you are. Because if you you can't say that someone who doesn't want to become good at drawing goes through the whole college course and becomes this amazing professional. No. There was this one person I remember when I was younger and I was I was really bad, okay? I was really bad drawing. And this person was like, Yeah, I'm about to finish my last year in college and you're better than me. And I was just like what <laughs> wait what and that's what i mean college doesn't make the person good the person does the drive you wanting to learn like you could sit through a whole class and not learn anything if that wasn't interesting to you so it has to be interesting to you and you have to want to learn it I mean, although there are things in art that you may not want to learn that you have to learn, so you got to find that balance, too. You have to make sure you're willing to put yourself through some pain to what you want. Okay, I've been doing this guy way too long, and that sounds so wrong. Also, I don't know if there's always going to be audio on my other stream channel. It may just be streaming. <laughs> it may not always have audio, but I mean, if I got a bunch of comments, I would definitely go and try to answer them, but I don't foresee that, especially in the beginning. But there will be audio, but I'm saying sometimes there won't be. Oh, yeah, let me answer that question while I'm just chilling here. Um, what is line weight? It's just um, kind of like, I, I could be wrong. It's the size of the pen, basically. And so it's how much your pen can, uh, maybe that's variance. I don't know. I'm just going to explain it what I think it is because maybe I'm wrong based on the technical actual like what it actually means but I always took it as basically the 
variants in which your pen can go from thin to thick like this. Um, and uh, no, well, line weight is just the thickness of the pen. It's just stating that like in comics, there's a lot of like, they use a lot of thicker and thinner lines to display certain things like foreground and background type of stuff. And, uh, yeah, foreground, midground, background. And, um, so things in the foreground would have thicker line weight when the things in the background would have thinner line weight, which is true in manga still, but it's less exaggerated. So it makes it look a little less, uh, I don't know. There's something about comics that always bothered me was, and they mentioned this in a manga I read about manga, Bakuman, um, that they didn't say this about comics, but I realized that it was something that could be, um, like, it made sense for comics. Like, what they're saying, basically they said, this isn't manga, these are illustrations. And that's what I feel like comics are doing they're not making characters that feel like they're supposed to move. They're making characters that feel like they're illustrated to be in that pose. Um, it's hard to explain exactly, but when, you, when you're not restricted by so many line weights, it makes it look more like the character's supposed to be able to move, right? At least that's my opinion. I'm not... Uh, that's not completely accurate. You know, opinions are opinions, but I don't know. With thinner line weights, it makes it feel like the characters are able to move right. It makes them feel more free. All right, I'm almost done with this panel. And no, I'm not saying like, these are just my critiques about like comics and stuff. No, I'm not better than any comic artist or something like a lot of them. And see, this is why I respect the work. Even though I don't necessarily like the style, the intricate detail that can go on in that stuff is crazy. Like I, I respect them as artists. You can not like something, but still respect it. <laughs> But um, one thing that also frustrates me about comics is literally the split up jobs. I know mangas have assistants that help, but the split up jobs that are really weird, like there's a person that pencils it, there's a person that inks it, and there's a person that colors it. Like, what? <laughs> They're treating it like animation, which I mean, so it's not a foreign concept. It's just kind of weird for comics to be like, oh, yes, Jim Lee created this or this person created this. I'd be like, yeah, but it, you can't just, I mean, they just were one portion of it. Everything works together to make something look really good. The inks work together to make the whole illustration look good. If the illustrations don't look good or the pages and panels don't look good, the inks won't look good, I mean, th I guess technically the inks could look good, but it lessens the quality of the whole, the whole look, because you could draw a piece of poop, but you could draw the piece of poop really good, and it looks like a really good piece of poop. Let me look at some comments here to see if I can answer them while I'm, while I'm going here. Um, 
is the average amount of time it usually takes you to complete a page like this one. Uh, this one can actually go pretty darn fast. I actually didn't spend that much time in this. Um, I'm a little groggy right now because of my sleep and I'm a little... Streams always distract me. <laughs> Streams always, always, always distract me. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, my work time on here is always slower than when I work normally. That's why the other stream isn't going to be as... I'm not going to be worried as much about trying to get to everything as much as it just being the process. But I will answer things. Hello there, Matthew. Um, let me see up here. Oh, oh I actually didn't answer your question. <laughs> um, basically, ah, that... It can take from anywhere between from sketch to finished ink. It can take anywhere from two and a half hours to six, seven hours. It really depends on what it is. This kind of page, um, if I sat there and went all the way through start to finish, I could finish this in two and a half hours if I wanted to. But I'm also a little like taxed right now. I'm a little drained um, from the work I've been doing. Like the other day, uh, uh, was it yesterday? I don't know. My sleep schedule's all messed up, which is mixing up my perception of time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, the other day I did a little thing on my Instagram, link in description by the way, Instagram's in the description. Um, I did a little thing on my Instagram yesterday asking people what, how many pages they thought I would be able to finish that day. And, of course, I was trying my hardest to finish as much as possible that day. So I, I did that little thing, and people voted. And, uh, yeah, um, a lot of people had a lot of faith in me to finish five pages. I was surprised. <laughs> but um, there was one page that, that, that kept me from finishing four pages. And starting on the fifth. This is the page right here that kept me from actually getting that far. Because I had a little too much detail to it. So it messed with me. And it messed with the flow. Like, So basically I got three and a half pages done. And I almost was able to get four done. Like if I didn't have to do as much, so much detail on this one. I wouldn't have. Uh, I would have made five. Or at least I would have made it to page five. So it really depends on detail. Backgrounds, detail. Characters are the easy part. I mean, positioning them, that's kind of annoying. But um, all in all, characters are the fastest thing to draw. In my opinion. Everyone has their own, their own, you know, strengths and weaknesses. Backgrounds are only a weakness when you don't have enough time, I feel like. <laughs> Let's see some comments here. Exactly why. Um, let see. Average time. Can you please tell me where I can read your manga and what it's about? Thanks. Uh, what it's about, um, you can actually read, I'm really bad at just describing things, I would just completely butcher it, but I am going to let you know that you can check it out in the description below, there should be a link, Arms of the Dragon or NorthCaesar.com, um, and uh, yeah, you could check it out through there, it's North Caesar and Arms of the Dragon, and by the way, on North Caesar for Arms of the Dragon and Ordinal Tempest, which I'm also part of, I'm the artist for, um, you can read the uh, preview chapter that they have up. It's only like six pages, but you could read the preview of it on all of these on the site. So definitely, if you haven't read some of the stuff, go check it out. But keep in mind, um, Arms of the Dragon, the preview chapter, was drawn over a year ago. So there is a difference in, in my art. <laughs> um, let me see. 
Can you please tell where you reach my, uh, go to the description on North Caesar? Exactly, that's why you usually do not see line weight. What is this mod about? Yeah, yeah, in anime, that's why you usually don't see line weights, so that way you can, s you can feel them moving. There's less... Uh, basically, that's how it is in real life, too. There's no, there's no line art around us. Line art really holds back the art from making it feel like the character can move. And, um, but just enough line variance in a black and white manga could give the um, perception that there's shadowing or there's more overlapping in that specific area. If you do it just enough, it makes it look better. No, I'm not the best at it. Yes, I'm still working on it. Um, I'm still working on a lot of things with my style. So this is just stuff that I, I've found. Um, have you heard about the new Dragon Ball uh, Heroes anime announced? I have heard about it. And I think it's pretty interesting that they're doing that. Um, I don't know how I feel about it until I see a trailer, and then I'll be like, <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully it's cool, though. What do you think about it? Oh, that's that. Right. And then why did you leave Saturday AM? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to explore some of my own stuff and uh, something I was more, you know, uh, I had more control over, um, more freedom. I wouldn't say control. Um, I just wanted to leave to do my my own thing and um i started doing my own thing and then i got an offer from north caesar and uh it was an offer i couldn't refuse because of what they're offering to me and um i took the offer and voila a few months later about six months later i finally was able to quit my job of seven years from dairy queen uh, to become a full-time manga artist, thanks to Nurse Caesar. So, um, yeah, I just I left it to um, you know pursue my own my own mangas, and I'm still doing the manga that I left to do. It's just um, these projects have also. It, it may seem like I'm drawing these mangas uh, as something separate of mine, but they're not really separate of mine because like. They they integrate me, like, John and Marcus integrate me so much into these projects that it feels like a project of my own, too. Like, we, we are really a team. So, but yeah. Um, anyways, by the way, there is a manga that is specifically mine that I am still developing. Actually, I have the first three chat. I have actually a lot outlined, like, arcs outlined and ideas for them. But then I also have, like, chapters of these things. Um, I have a few chapters outlined and then three chapters ready to... I, I just need to storyboard them. I just haven't had the time. Uh, it's called Novum. I haven't really talked about it too much on this channel. But um, let me see if I can go find some art for it real quick. Just really quick here. Um... Yeah, this is some of the artwork for Novum, some of the concept work. But, yeah. This is some of the work for Novum that I'm going to be doing. But, yeah, that's that. That's a uh, oh, click here real quick. No boom, but yeah, that's a uh, that's what I'm working on is currently. Um, let me see. Don't know what's weird. Don't know it's weird because it mixes uh, realities like GT Goku versus Super Saiyan Blue fusion between drugs. Ah, that's weird. It sounds like it could be cool to watch, but it may be really weird story-wise. Hopefully they nail it with the animation, though. Yeah, definitely. Let's see what it's going to be like. I'm happy that Goku is 
not the main character. Oh yeah, yeah, he's not, that's right. It's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Dude, fuck, dude, Go Gohan got messed up in that series. It's just, whatever, I'm not gonna get it. <laughs> Never be the same, it wasn't that bad. I love it. Dang. Wow, seven years at Dairy Queen, how old are you? Um, um, I am 27. Yeah, seven years at Dairy Queen. It was a massive amount of time. And I'm not, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, one of the reasons why I progress so slowly is because of how much I worked at that job. Um, I was working like 100 hour weeks or sorry, 100 hour, uh, it, it was like fif over 50 hours a week, 100 hours every two weeks. I was working there six days a week, and I still was able to do enough work that I was able to get out of there. I, I was working so much at that place. It wasn't even funny, like, it was very depressing. And my job, my, my boss was really, Pretty bad. He was a super dick, <laughs> super dick. But yeah, it it was ugh, it was just I hated it so much. But that was one of the things that drove me. It would be like, well, then why didn't you get another job? There's a few factors other than, um. There, there is a few factors in why I didn't get another job other than just uh, security. Like, I need to make sure I had that money. But um, um, I also knew that there's a chance if humans, uh, if we get comfortable, we may not push ourselves as hard. It was almost like an inspiration as well. But it also uh, hurt me as an artist because I progressed much slower because of how much stress I was under between everything. So it's a double-edged sword. And uh, I'm, it's towards the end, even when I was getting published, it ground me down so much for those seven years because how much I was working. Um, I started losing my drive, and I've only recently started to gain it back, you know, four months later after being out. I really started losing my drive for art. The only thing that was um, keeping me up is just perseverance. Like, it was just like, this is the only thing that I want to do or the only thing that I'm even remotely good at that I've continued to do. So I was like, I made the choice. I either make it or I die trying, and so I kept going, and uh, I'm here now, so my career isn't like huge or anything, but maybe one day it will be, and I'm always working every day to try to better myself as an artist, so my stuff doesn't always look this shitty. Oh, poopy. You two police, please. Please don't hit me. <laughs> Let me look at some comments here real quick. Uh, oh, are you close with Nicholas? I'm not close with Nicholas, but I do know him. Uh, we follow each other on Instagram, and uh, he's an awesome artist. And we work in the same company. So he works on EXO, which is getting an anime, and, uh, or a uh, pilot anime episode. So make sure to... Keep an eye on that. That's pretty crazy. So, yeah, Nicholas is awesome. Do you know Ross Draws? Who doesn't know Ross Draws? And maybe not everyone knows Wallop, but yes, I do know Wallop. Um, Dragon Ball Heroes usually has good animation. Um, yeah, uh, hopefully it does it. I mean, I would definitely watch it. It looks like it's going to be, like, the animation, if it's bad, people are going to 
go insane anyways. So they, they're going to make sure, just like Dragon Ball Super, they're going to make sure it looks good. Have you ever heard this joke? How did Dairy Queen get pregnant? Yes, I did. I've already heard it. <laughs> get out of here. Don't talk to me about Dairy Queen stuff. I still have flashbacks of that place, okay? Have you played Dragon Ball Fighter Z? Family friendly, please. <laughs> okay, uh, about Dragon Ball Fighter Z? No, I have not. I don't have a PS4. Uh, I, I I have a PS3, and I don't play it, and it hasn't been touched in a long time. I don't play video games. Um, because they're my worst enemy. I do not know why. Don't ask me why, but for me. When I play <laughs> Vietnam Dairy Queen Flashback, you're still here, John. <laughs> Too bad I couldn't like get you in this call somehow. We definitely need to do that sometime. <laughs> uh, but um, I, I completely forgot what I was saying. Oh gosh, let me look at this again. Oh, no, I don't play video games because they're my worst enemy. For some reason, even though they're really cool and they're really fun, it's not because I can't stop playing them, which is actually a big part of it, but that's not the main part of it. For some reason, when playing video games, I lose my ability to draw very easily. I don't know what it is, but it ruins my creativity. It's I, And I think it has to do with me letting something else create an image for me like create the world for me I can't enjoy it it's like my mind relaxes too much and starts dumping all the information I've, I've, I don't, I don't even know what it is it's freaking weird though I mean I'm not going to say I'm not going to play video games at some point it's something I definitely want to do a little more um, but like I don't know it's it, video games are my worst enemy when it comes to my art and creativity I don't know why Ugh, I'm still drawing this. Would you guys be interested in when I start um, penciling the page, the next page, which is coming up very soon here, um, would you be interested in me reading the portion of the script that I'm going to be doing aloud to you guys so you see how I adapt it? Oh, oh I just cracked, cracked my neck. Who's the main character of this current manga? The main character of this current manga is Xiao, which is a, this guy. Oh, right. I tried to just draw on that, but I I, I couldn't. Um, this guy oh, right here. But then there's this guy is also a main character. Um, he just recently showed up. And then there will, there's also Shizuru. So they're the main cast. But the main character is Xiao. Let me get back to this. Here, wait, which one is it? It's this one. Yeah, okay. Xiao. I could technically go out. You know what's so cool about this? I'm streaming on my iPad. So I could actually go out on my balcony if I wanted to and still like draw and talk to you guys. Of course, I don't know how the... Uh, uh, oh, shoot. I'm trying, okay, I don't know how the reception of this would be, of the like it might mess with the streaming quality, but uh, yeah. What do you think of the new Dragon Ball Z film? 
things are, oh, the new Dragon Ball Z film looks freaking amazing. <laughs> I'm always here, you fool. <laughs> It's more like old Dragon Ball. Yeah, yeah, definitely the style does feel like that. Yeah, I do I do like the animation for it. Dragon Ball Super Animation, all right, yes, yes. Um, that's against ND. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's okay, Don. I've, uh, I think I've actually asked you guys this, guys this before, something similar. <laughs> you little troll. D literally I would be drawing it on here anyways I wouldn't mention the dialogue I'm not going to mention the dialogue because that's that that would be ruining the page entirely so I'll leave the dialogue for um you know for the actual manga it's too much battery I have left on this guy 74 minutes this stream really doesn't do much to this Yeah, I can't recall what the super animation looked like at the end. Yeah, if it was any different, but Toei is butcher. Yeah, Toei doesn't have the best track record, at least as of recent. Other than Super started doing okay after fans complained. Hey, what's up, jo Joka? The rock star. Joke at the rock star. I remember you. I remember you. I remember that name trying to say it before. I feel like. Have you been in here before? I think you have been. I'm not very good with names. So. <laughs> at the end, it was good. But I'm not going to be able to answer all these because I kind of want to keep drawing. But um, I'm definitely going to read over them and anything that's not like. Anything that's more new or fresh, or something that sparks my interest, I'll definitely say something towards. Um, have you heard of Near Automa? Yeah, I actually really want to play that video game. That is one of the video games that I would take the hit of losing inspiration, um, or gaining, who knows, to play, because that thing looks freaking <laughs> awesome. I really want to do an, uh, fan art for it. But, yeah, that's the thing. That check looks super cool. Um... I could stop laughing about Freezer's face. Freezer's face, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the talk. I've got to go to bed now. It's already 3 a.m. You're an amazing human. Keep it up the good work. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that first part because of all the little things about the letters, but I'm going to call you Foji. Foj Fojit. Fojit. Or Stefan, or or Stepan. Ste Anyways, thank you very much, and I hope you have a good sleep. I hope you have a good night's sleep. Uh, puffing something. <laughs> uh, get out of here, Tanith Elite. Uh, it's three a.m., but the stream is fun. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, so late at night, hopefully I don't make you late for anything. so Or make you lose sleep or something like that. Mm. Uh, let's get this going here. Let's get the... Oh, no. I was going to... Draw that on a separate layer. Um, let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. It's it, this stream is my favorite game of all time. It's my favorite game of all time. Oh, great! John says it's his favorite game of all time. So this is why the chapters are always late. Trash ass artist. Oh, sorry. YouTube, please, please don't. No. <laughs> Also, sorry, John. John's 
a good author um in his own evil way he's a great author in his own evil way you like to see people dying please follow our work <laughs> Yeah, definitely should get John in here sometimes, so that way he can just, like, talk about stuff while I'm drawing. Just, <laughs> although that will just end up, like, giving him less time to work on the three series he's writing. By the way, guys, he is also a big trooper and a uh, hard worker, too. He writes three series for Nor Noyar or Nor Caesar, guys, so crazy writer there, so... Remember to check him out on social media. Vermilion Knight or Project Break on Instagram. That is his handle on Instagram. Project Break. probably pretty loud those sounds I'm making so I'm gonna try to stop I, I sometimes I'll watch uh, portions of the stream that I do so that way I see if like any sounds I make are loud and stuff and I, I notice those sounds are kind of weird when I make them I didn't even know I was making them so now I'm a little self-conscious <laughs> here Damn it. get this white here let me get this right there let's uh I'm gonna do this uh, I'm gonna do it in blacks you guys may not know what I'm talking about but that's okay um, actually I think I'm just gonna do selection here What am I doing? You don't have to know what I'm doing. You'll see you'll see what happens when I'm finished with this. It's all in order to pretty much get these people from getting hit by what I'm gonna be putting behind them. Alright, um, that should be good enough. Alright, now we're gonna lock this. Do this so make sure that's all good. Uh, I wish I had a fan right now blowing on this um iPad it's starting to warm. Probably doesn't help that this it's on some fabric below it. Just a second. Exit the stream, go back in the stream. Okay. Now that I got that selected, so basically let me explain what I did. Um, I put a white area behind them. So that way I can now go in with a tree brush because I'm running I'm running out of time here and it's gonna be best for all of us if I just do it like this. Uh, oh, wrong one. Okay. Um, for trees on the other side. So I put white behind these bricks and stuff. So what I'm doing here does not actually affect it in any sort of way because it's on the other side here and now go 
go in with eraser, erase away what I don't need here. Um, let's see. Yeah, tree brushes are actually, you know, they're 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 already on Clip Studio. Actually, I think this specific tree brush is on Clip Studio, Clip Studio already. I uh, would normally do my own trees and stuff, but this is just too large of a amount, and I don't have any assistance to help. So, I want to make sure the quality is good enough for you guys, and uh, I want to make sure it looks good. Though there are some of the backgrounds in here that I did start doing by hand. Some of them are brush related and then some of them are by hand because I wanted uh, specific things to look a little bit more organic. Not all of them are like, even if I used a brush, it looks really weird. So just the brush, I have to do a lot of editing in between because the brushes don't, don't actually, they're made for like to be able to zoom in and out, but their best quality is in kind of one kind of zoom and if you don't do it in that kind of zoom uh or that size it makes it look really weird because of the line weight once again the line weight important thing um, but yeah it makes it look very strange if you don't do it right it looks obviously fake like someone didn't draw that or something As you can tell here, I'm having some problem here. Yeah. Density, how, 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 okay, okay, okay. Let's do this here. Like basically not everyone would be able to just take a tree brush and make it work right. You have to know how trees work and the shadows work on it anyway. So it still takes the skill. I'm almost done with this panel. Notice I, when I do these, I don't put any screen tones in. It's because I'm just not screen toning. <laughs> um, uh, yet I do screen tones afterwards. But yeah. Um, let's make sure I, um, that white space right there could definitely be taken down a notch. Um, let's, uh, let's get, dang it, what's going on? Oh, that's the white space, okay. Gonna look at some comments here in just a moment. Give me just a moment here. Let me 
let's see how this is doing, how it looks against the white. Sometimes you don't have to crop it away from the white. Uh, it might be beneficial to crop it a little bit away from the white or hatch it away from the white a bit. Um, you know, that looks good enough. All I got to do here is I got to come in here and uh, get away from this these letters. Alright, that is just about good enough for me, I would have to say, on this page. And uh, about to hit up the next page, guys. I might have to run to the bathroom for a brief second, because this coffee is going straight through me. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah I might have to, might have to go to the bathroom. Oh yeah, put the white stuff there. Oh, that sounds weird too. Put the white stuff there. <laughs> okay, let's take out um, the pencils. All right, so the screen tones would, you know, be like up here or something. Sky and uh, sky up on this upper part up here. I also have to do a design on that uh, little shell there, but um, I don't want to look that up right this second I want to move on to the script which I am going to now go look for mm -mm. let's see oh I'm at 9228 I got four more subscribers so if any of those subscribers are in this live stream right now thank you very much subscribing for subscribing and Thank you for everyone who has been subscribed as well, once again. All right, I gotta go find the script. <laughs> I'm not gonna put it up on screen, even though I could, because uh, I don't want you to see the whole script. It would not be a good. Uh, what in the, okay, what page am I on? Okay, I'm going to be on 11 here, which is not far enough. So, um, okay, let's read this. Let it, let's read this here. Um, okay, so page 11, it says... Shu stares down at it with weary eyes. At it saying the thing he just threw to him in the previous page. Stares down at it with weary eyes, but his smile suggests he isn't mad at June or anything. In fact, his, his, he's impressed. He's come to terms with their deaths by this point. Their deaths, um... Meaning, read the other, you know, read, 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 read the chapters up to this point. Buy the volume, read it. You'll, you'll know what we're talking about. No need for an intense emotional reaction, though he can still be sad by his eyes. Alright, and then, shoo, dialogue, not gonna say what it is, and then June, so that was panel one. The very first thing I read about um, basically breaking down this emotion, that was panel one. Panel two, there's dialogue. Um, panel three, dialogue. Uh, I'll put a narration in there that was that's supposed to describe an emotion in these two. Panel two has nod. I won't say the dialogue, though. Panel three has irritated twitch. Um, and then panel four has dialogue. And I would just come up with the emotion based on the situation. So, context. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's four panels on this page. Um, I, just in case someone comes into the stream and is wondering where I'm at, uh, I'm going to be like, right, 
Oh, what the? Be back in sec. Bathroom break. Bathroom break. <laughs> I'll be right back, guys. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'll let this music play right here. I am back here. Sorry about that there. I really had to go to the bathroom. Hopefully the music wasn't too loud. It was like right next to it. Um, let's clear this out here. And ew, what did I just get on my screen? Okay, so um, right here off to the left hand side of Clipster, you can see all these pages, right? So this is the left page which means the gutter is going to be on the right hand side so i'm going to do these just to mark so i know which is which um, which means no panels can go off this direction okay let me look to see if there's any comments before i start this can you import brushes well uh, i'm a bit of a best <laughs> oh gosh there's a lot of comments here i I did not expect this many comments. So, um, it's my favorite game. Yeah, I wish I could stay. Oh, oh I missed that one. I wish I could have stayed by the room one last time. Uh, the dark series is my most So, yeah, get on that, Chris. <laughs> Understand me. <laughs> Your artwork of my hero they inspired me to check out the show. And now I'm hooked, still waiting on the coloring tutorial i i will be doing a coloring tutorial i promise it'll probably be in a live stream so it's more interactive and live streams are easier to do that with so yeah um now that this live stream stuff is kind of starting to pick up a little bit um yeah i'll definitely do a coloring tutorial like that um it's just i've never been really good with uh structuring you know those those time-lapse videos with coloring tutorials it's it's really annoying but um doing it in a live stream version is a much much more i like that experience more um uh what kind of music do you like <laughs> k-pop who said k-pop oh you're asking him <laughs> um yeah i mean honestly there's some k-pop songs that i do like i like music that sounds good to my ears so i don't have any specific preference i like some metal i don't really listen to it very much anymore though i like some screamo i like some punk um there are some pop songs i like there's some very few r&b songs i like i i'm not a big fan of rap 
per se. So there are some rap songs that I do like that are done tastefully. Um, but overall, I don't like that genre as much. So that's why some R&B has some like rap elements in it that I'm not so fancy of. But yeah. And I do listen to a lot of anime music as well. But recently, 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 I've been really into classic music. So like piano, um, violins, uh, acoustic guitar uh, with no vocals. And I've also been into some, some certain operas, not English operas, but different language operas that kind of sound like that music that would be epic in a background. It's like, whoa you know you guys heard that i am good no i'm kidding but um yeah stuff like that uh, i've been listening to to kind of get like either relaxing mood or epic moods without words that will distract me it's uh, really soothing honestly and the way i do that is if you guys have spotify go to the moods section and then go and find classic and they have a bunch of radio sections for that that are really nice i really like that um, actually, I s shared a song that I was listening to earlier on my Instagram. So when you guys get a chance, go check out my Instagram, look at the stories section, and it actually shows one of the songs I was listening to recently that I really like. It was a really cool song. I, I loved it. It was kind of like opery, but it's in a different language, so it sounds like one of those really epic songs. Anyways, family friendly. Oh, I can't read that part. <laughs> Do you like uh, she Ishida? style ah I, that sounds familiar but i don't know the manga what manga is it for not only for the manga but for the illustration as well um what's up haven't caught one of your streams in a while um well good to see you here luna i'm glad you're here and um let me see i need that tree brush <laughs> honestly you know they have this store that you can go to um yeah, the assistant store. You can go to the assistant store, and you can download a bunch of uh, a bunch of stuff and brushes. So you can do that. Um, return. Um, yeah, that's how you can get a lot of stuff. Um, I can't import brushes to Clip Studio Paint. Uh, that's a long process. I'm not going to go through right now, but I do have a video uh, for it. Um, let me see if I can uh, just find it really quick here while maybe I'm talking about something else. Go to my channel and let me go to videos. Let me scroll down here real quick. Um... Show whack on be afraid, blah 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 blah. Making live stream of the clip studio, clip studio pen pressure quick tips. That's the one iPad Pro clip studio pen pressure and quick tips. I believe may have it, or is it? Ah, oh, this is the one right below it iPad Pro clip studio importing brushes, Photoshop documents, and images. Go to that one and uh, I actually go over it in that one. So you can figure it out through there. Oh, I almost thought it wasn't recording. Oh, thank God. I didn't want to lose my live stream there. Um, I can't remember. Uh, I did. I did. I, I'm not able to do it again. I don't know why. Okay, that's part of that. Okay, PC. <laughs> uh, oh, you're on the PC. Okay, it should be the same either way. Um, uh, it may be a little bit different because I'm doing it through the iPad, but... Um, all in all, it, it's still kind of the same idea. Basically, you have to have the brush downloaded on your computer. And if you, just like the one I'm going to, uh, it shows in there, you pr pretty much try to drop it into one of these sections that you have here. Um, uh, PC, oh, la la la, that is nice. Oh, la la la, that is nice. Uh, Personally, I've never used a cross-hatching brush, but I can understand why some people would. Have you tried it? If so, your opinion on it. Um, 
Okay, cross-hatching brush. That's an interesting subject because honestly, cross-hatching brushes look really stupid if you just use them. They look very stupid, very unorganic, and it's actually really annoying. I don't like it when people just use them because they look very generic. Um, yeah, so uh, there's specific ways I do use them. Uh... trying to find an example of how I might use it and here I am going through like all the pages for you guys like um here right there I used a cross hatching on her head I used a cross hatching brush there to kind of separate the background from them I also use it in uh, other styles like right here with his I use the cross hatching brush I do that in white uh, while the layer is locked and then I go back over it in black to kind of give it a different kind of gritty gradients. That's how I use it. Um, read the manga. I normally just use a pen, clips, but sometimes it's useful in effects. I just use texture brush or something. Um, yeah, sometimes texture brushes. It's really all about how you use the brush or or the hatching it's how you use it that makes it do it right because if you use something that's digital sometimes it'll just look really weird and generic you have to know how to place the stuff properly do you read or watch black clover i was watching it i did read a little bit and then i stopped kind of lost uh interest not interest i haven't been reading any manga that much but it's actually it's it's a fun read even though it's a little generic it's a fun read and a fun watch all right, bro, got to head out. See you later, John. Um, I think you did that a little bit ago, but, uh, yep. Yeah. See you later, man. Probably a meeting with you soon. <laughs> Time to clean the house and stay safe. Good work as always. Thanks, man. I always love piano and violins. Oh, yeah, violins are really cool. Like, for example, Naruto soundtrack, yes. And many other soundtracks, like... The binding forest, yeah. Shinjo is Tokyo. Oh, he's the creator for Tokyo Gold. Yes, I do really like his stuff. Although, I like his Tokyo Gold re series art more than his normal Tokyo Gold series. And I mean, that's a given because, um, you know, his art progressed, but I really like his art in uh, Tokyo Gold re series. You can really see his improvements and where he's started to excel and where he's learned from his uh, previous mistakes so i really like that stuff um i tried it the last time i worked but this time it doesn't work hmm i'm not sure I, i'm really not sure right now sorry man about the brushes plus i actually don't have windows either i actually only have mac um Puzumari, i was wondering if this manga is only available online or if you can buy a print paper, but I'm not interested in reading, but I'm sure a fan of collecting manga. Okay, so, um, so basically it is only digital right now. You can buy it digitally, but um, it is, I'm actually, this is the last chapter of the volume. And um, the volume will be coming out very soon here, the physical volume you can buy. So, Kumari, I was wondering if this manga is... Oh, I already read that. Hello there, the Basto. And um, Jeremy M, what equipment do you use to go live? I use Omelette Arcade. It is this guy right here. I can't really show you. Um, it is... It's this app right here. Omelette Arcade. That's where I used to go live. And it's super easy, efficient, and cool. And so far, it seems like it's free. Um, anyways, uh, let me see here. No problem. I will just try it another time. Thanks. No problem. Sorry I couldn't help you more, man. I'm going to take a drink of coffee here, and let's do this page. I'm going to refresh this to see. Real quick. Uh. 
All right, let's get to it. Panel one, let me break down how I'm doing this in my head. Panel one stares down at a very weary. So there's four panels. Um, I'm not gonna break down how to do pages right now. That can be a whole separate video, but just to give you a quick idea, normally the pages are broken up into either two tiers, which can be different sizes. So it could be like this, and then panels down here, or it can be like panels here, panels here, panels here, or, and you can change the size of those, or panels here, panels here, you know, panel here, just like the last page, or you could go uh, long panel here, panel here, panel here, panel here, or you could you know, divide this into three. So it's it's kind of like that. Um, I'll go more in depth into that into you know another stream, another tutorial, better. But so uh, so this is four panels. So I have a lot of freedom here in the fact that I could either use a really big panel on top. Um, I'm just going to think here for a second, so I'm not just talking. Um, I can't, I'm, I'm going to try to work it out in my head. I have to visualize what's going on. <clears throat> so give me just a second here. Sure. Based on the last page, flip over. Let's hit up a big top panel here. So there's four. There's four. Plus, okay, let me see. Okay. I know I'm going to do it now. Okay, I'm trying to do a little bit more page variation right now because my pages have been pretty much the same. Um, and I actually have a huge breakdown. Uh, uh, oh, I almost fell backwards just right then. I was stretching. Um, I have a huge breakdown of manga and what I've learned about manga since I've started doing this uh, professionally. Um, and uh, I, I'm definitely going to start doing uh, live stream tutorials on stuff like this. And uh, stuff that would be very useful that um, I learned all on my own. And it's going to be cool to be able to tell you guys if you guys don't already know. So I'm excited about that. Um, okay, I got my panel breakdowns here. And let's start the drawing. Okie dokie. Let's see. So... Just thinking out the pose real quick. So this is why I wish I had a cam right now, because I would be able to show myself thinking about this. <laughs> so you know I'm just not. <laughs> I'll put this. Thinking. <laughs> and then I'll crop this onto another layer so I can quickly erase. Cut. Paste. Right now, what's going on for in my mind is he's going to be looking at this thing at that got thrown to him. It has a history to it from the first chapters, and we want to. He, we have to show his emotion on his face a little bit, and we have to show the item. I'm deciding whether to put the item close, with a below view towards the camera, or if I should do a top view, showing it. But the top view is going to be harder to display the emotion. Ah, oh, I think I just got it. Very simple, kind of 
Let's hit it up like this, maybe. And We'll answer that question here in just a second. I did want his hand a little bit bigger here, but I drew him a little small for that. This is proving to be a little difficult, but the kind of frame that I put here. And I need to watch out for this crop area at the top. This crop area at the top area. in here while trying to keep the eye and eyes and head in here for the emotion I'm trying to fit in a little bit more below view and then what we can do here is maybe tilt this ah yes that that works a little better because then we were able to um, Let's this load here. Uh-oh. Hopefully it doesn't mess with the stream because I know it could take up some good. Okay. So what we did, what we were able to do here is uh, move the eyes down away from the top crop mark up here. While when doing that, shifting that that way, that shifted that this way, allowing the hand to be more visible. I should have thought of that before I started drawing all this stuff to try to... Get this a little bit more accurately and faster. Let's 
let's do this. And then this, this. Uh, the hand's actually going to be forced to go this way a little bit instead. I wish I could see the charm a little more. Though we do know what the charm is already. Let's give it a little bit more. All right, we'll look at some comments here in a second. What I'll do is I'll show the bottom of it right here. And then I'll show the chain coming down right here out of his hand. So we, we do know what he's still looking at. Obviously, you know, from context from the previous image, but I wanted to give it a little bit more visual uh, story to it. Oh, seeing if maybe I can move this a little bit. I normally don't like selecting, but if you gotta do it, you gotta do it. I don't have much time. Mm. Also feels like this also might be a little too. Oh yeah, the neck felt a little crammed, and there's so much space in this top area that I can actually grab this and move it down to give us a little bit more room up there. So that way this whole scene actually works right here. And I may even go back to twisting him just a little bit more. Pulling him a little bit. Mm, actually, I think it might have been good where it was. Because he's at about... Cancel. I like that little tweak. I like that little tweak. All right, I'm gonna look at some comments here. Now I got that down. That took longer than it normally would. Sorry about that. Um, I am very, I'm very tired. Wish I had a little bit more coffee. Uh, okay, let's see where I am here. What equipment you use in the life? I already read that, no problem. Just another day by the way. Okay, go on ahead. Outside. See ya. Go ahead, I'll see ya. Thanks for answering the questions. I'll be back next stream. I love the idea of another channel just for streaming. Well, it was good to know. Good to know I got some people that are going to at least be watching it, and I will be doing that for sure. Yulia, you don't storyboard first? Okay. Okay. All right, so... Um, uh, no, I do not storyboard first. To save time, I would not recommend to do this. Um, I've been working off this system. So every single chapter you see, every single drawing you see is the rawest form of what it is for manga for me. It is no nothing. It's no pre-planning. I look at the script, I draw it, and uh, it, it does leave me with things that I wish I could have done a little bit better and could have fixed from a storyboard to an actual finished page. Um, but, yeah. I, I stopped doing storyboards because they just take up too much time. I could do stick figure ones, but, um, which I'm, I, I'm actually going to start doing, but this, this is so fast for me.
being able to do stuff like this is much faster. Quick anatomy, a uh, little thing about heads, a little talk about heads, is one thing from the bottom position that a lot of people uh, start missing is where to put the ear. It's not directly, okay, this line goes, it's not directly in the middle of the line. Ears are normally, when you look at a head, it can vary based on person, but um, let's put the eyes right here. You know, and then uh, the ears are not directly right here. They can be, it can seem like they're there sometimes for some people, but this is straight on. This is not curved a little bit like that or curved a little bit like this. It's straight on. The ear is going to be about one third of the way down. So it comes up to about one third of the ear, the eyes. At least that's what I've noticed. It can obviously, people's faces are different, so it can vary, but. That's a good standard to go by. So when it's like this, you want to make sure you're putting it down not too high. It will make it look weird. And it will also offset your jaw, too, that you're drawing. I may have put this mouth a little too low, a little bit too low for how another thing um, we tend to not realize we're doing wrong is where we put the nose when we put it on the face uh, from this angle. This is why it's good to know some anatomy stuff, like the nose fits in. Fits in, like, it's like this little triangle. It's, it's this little triangle that you can just put on the face, and you don't have to draw it as a triangle when you finish it. It's just a good place marker, so like if you were to draw a face like this, you know you're going to be putting it like that, and you know it connects to where the line, the eyes are, which would be right there. Put the eyes right here. We know that this goes here, this goes under, and it foreshortens. So these are quick little tips. Hopefully you guys like that there. Although this face is not the proper face structure for Shao, for Shu. I'm also starting to get the vibe that the eyes may be a little bit too big for him, but I'm still learning stuff about my process. And one of the things that I'm learning is I don't use any reference photos. Like I don't have any photos of Shu that I'm going off of. So I don't have a set way I draw his eyes. And that's a very, very bad thing. And that's something I need to work on as a creator, actually doing that, creating a set uh, design that I can go back to and look at and be like, and memorize, this is how I draw the eyes. That is actually something um, that I'm not doing that would speed up my process a lot more because then I would memorize how to do that character from every angle really easily. Oh, I just made him mad. That's not the point. It's not supposed to be a mad. I broaden these shoulders because he's actually a bigger person than this. And there we go. I had to grasp this perspective a little bit in my head before I kept on moving forward with it. Okay, the arm's moving. It's at a pretty standard angle. It's not necessarily moving forward. It just looks like that because of the foreshortening. So this is going to wrap around it like this so remember when an arm if an arm's stagnant like this let's just say this is from the a side view right and uh we're like this this is clothing you draw the sleeve almost just chilling there 
not touching the arms necessarily, but if they move the arm forward like this, the sleeve will do this. If they move the arm, oh, if they move the arm back, let's do the body here, move the arm back, the sleeve will do this. So keep that in mind. Hope you, hopefully you guys like these little tips, if anyone's even still watching the stream. Uh, we got 12 people. Oh, we got some more subscribers since I last looked. We are at 9,231. If any of those new subscribers are in the stream, thank you for subscribing, and I'm happy you are here. see this ear from this other side all right this is more sketchy than I normally do it but let's just go with it let's block in this finger here block in this part um, basically uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm working towards a goal with my art doing it like this to eventually never have to do a storyboard and just visualize it beforehand and then just bam. Or if I did a storyboard, I would be able to do it very, very fast. Okay. Okay, it normally didn't take me that long for a sketch. Didn't take me that long earlier, but I'm a little distracted right now. <laughs> okay. Um. I want to give him a little bit more of a smirk here. Actually, because it's going to go along with the, the next panel, the reaction panel. All right. All right, you'll see. You'll see why this works so well when you actually read the manga, because I'm not going to give you guys dialogue here. Hey, what's up, Pillowhead? You're back. Glad to see you back. Um, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be streaming. Um, I'm going to try to get this sketch page done and then maybe start inking this top one a little bit and then a little after that I might go but let's see if we can uh, see if we can hustle through this um, no I, I wouldn't I can't read this because the dialogue um, Let's figure out the perspective of this. Oh, um, it, there is going to be a bubble here. Uh, let's put it at top left because they're going to come to this page. They're going to look here, empty space, find what they see, and then it's going to lead them back down here because this is left to right, which is they'll read it right away, and then they'll see the person's emotion and pose down here. Now... Just trying to figure out the best way of, to do this. Hmm, might end up doing a pretty standard. I was trying to think of a 
I'm trying to think of a different uh, angle, but I may be able to just get away with doing this. Not necessarily getting away with it, but it may be the best choice to not take away with just take away from what he's kind of saying with uh, with an angle that's unneeded. So don't try to do angles that are unneeded just because you think there needs to be a different variance. If you look at manga, they're really a lot of the angles are sometimes a little bit above shots. Mostly it's it's head head height shots, especially with just talking scenes. But the question is, um, see, it, it has like almost the same ratio of head size as that top panel. So it may feel a little bit um, overused, that size, that it makes it feel like the same angle almost. So uh, but depending, he's talking on sh talking to sh uh, um, June, which is to his left which if I change it to this, ah, I think I found a better way because this means he's looking to his left. So we change the camera angle to shoes right and have him tilting his head to display what he's saying, what I want him to be saying. Time is it 7:46? Yeah, I cannot have 7:46 my time. I cannot have coffee right now. I actually want to get a good night's sleep tonight because I haven't slept much, and I want to make sure I'm recharged for my hustle day tomorrow. Probably gonna be going to sleep around mm, one or two my time. Maybe maybe earlier. Uh, not sure yet. Not sure yet. I like that other eye better. I think what I'm getting confused about is whether he's looking at the camera or if he's looking off the camera. Sometimes the problems are the things that we're really not thinking about and we think it's something else because I'm uh, like you may be having a different thought of you have to make sure all your thoughts on what's going on in the drawing you're doing um, is all going for the same thing like be conscious of what your point is like if I'm drawing these eyes I want to make sure I know he's looking either off the screen or at the camera or in a certain place and I know that place that he's looking. And I'm still not sure if, okay, I think I'm gonna try to get him to look a little bit at the camera. I want to raise his eye a little bit so it's not too smirky. Raise his eyelid, the way he's saying it, it doesn't look too smirky. Like, <laughs> but raise the eyebrow on this side a little bit. Get this jaw. All right, all right, let's uh, pull this back part out here. Pull this out like this. Hmm. Looks like he's holding his, pulling his other shoulder up, which is not what I'm going for. Let's pull it down. Ah, yes, that looks a little better there. And let's 
put in these collarbones for a little placeholder on exactly what perspective I'm doing here. Wraps around this side, wraps around this side. Let's put in the shirt mark here. Wraps around like that. And now let's put in some squigglies for the hair. Let's solidify this ear a little bit more. Um, let's make sure we're putting in the right spot. Just about a little bit lower than that. move on to um, June irritated irritated twitch um. mm. I could go with a very standard shot with this. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. Let's zoom this out a bit. Because I want to show, uh, well, shoot. Um, I think I want to zoom it out even more. That's not what I wanted for the facial expression or, or the certain feel I wanted for this. But let's try to get, I want to show his. Shoulders pumped up. Head at an angle here draw these bones to where I'm thinking of the skull structure as much as I possibly can for this head tilt so I know where the jaw is and where the nose will land here needs to be. Ah, there we go. Happy little accident there. Didn't mean to actually get that the way it did, and it turned out exactly what I was going for. <laughs> As Bob Ross would say, happy, there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. Actually, I've never watched Bob Ross. I just know that. I think that's what he says, right? Is this still recording? Yes, it is. Cool. 45%. By the way, Yulia, um, if you're still here, how do you like your iPad so far? Uh, let me see what's going on here. We're going to look at some comments. Um, you like these kind of tips? They really help. Well, that's good to know. I'll definitely point out some stuff like that as we go along. Back. Uh, oh man, I missed the uh, thinking process of this. This stream will stay on YouTube. Yes, it should be re uploaded unless there's some sort of freak accident, which there should not be. I'm late. I'm still here somehow. Normally I would end my streams a little sooner, but I don't know. I'm just letting this go with the flow because I'm, I'm working right now. So it's kind of like I'm working, streaming, might as well just let it go. <laughs> Bob Ross still OG. Oh man, I'm getting hungry, guys. I think that's another uh, loss of uh, energy here. Definitely hungry. What am I going to have after this? No one asked me, but I will tell you. 
I'm probably gonna have some fries and a hot dog from my house. I'm not gonna go out and eat. Fun little, fun little fact here. I uh, went to the store the other day. Uh, went to the um, convenience store. Just gonna say this real quick. Went to the convenience store the other day. Um, this is how little I leave my house now. I went to the convenience store the other day when it was light outside. Still, there's still light outside. And um, when I was walking there, it was like I realized the meaning of what I'm drawing for. And sometimes you lose sight of that when you stay inside and do one thing too much. And you get in this really weird mindset. And things just started getting a little bit more bright. And it gave me more inspiration. Like, that's ridiculous. I've just been inside too much that a walk to the convenience store, like literally seven minutes, maybe less, to the convenience store cheered me up in a different kind of way. It was weird. <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's get to this. The last panel, guys. Um... Not gonna be much backgrounds in these two, huh? These these panels. So this last panel should probably have some sort of background. Um let's do a here's a fun little tip. Um if there's a head here and there's a head here, your horizon line obviously isn't going to be on this page. If you want the horizon line to be on the page and you have two heads and they're standing normally, and this is a good way if the horizon line is at eye length, all heads, I think I mentioned this before, are going to be in the same area here. Oh, they're all going to be on that horizon line. So I'm trying to gauge exactly how I want to show Shu. I want to show June. It's Shu is waving June to follow him. I'm not sure if I want to even show Um, shoes face the showing shoes face not be may not be necessary here but I don't want to do the same the same angle give some variety I may not even have to show maybe I can show from the back of shoe like this because it's talking to shoe so or June sorry it's talking to June so maybe I can put him here and then put Shu here because he's he, he's walking, and I want him to wave, be like, "Come on, man," type of thing. That's not what he says, but um, he doesn't have to wave with his hand. It would be good to do that because I like the idea of being able to tell, uh what they're saying like what's going on but maybe i could do that with his head motion like come on maybe his head motion and his shoulder maybe his shoulder would be pulling forward a little bit here but then that would leave a curve here we wouldn't see this other side You know, that's that, that's okay. If I actually do that, would it be good to have his arm forward like this? Showing this walking forward or his arm back like this? And then maybe I could show this arm moving forward. Or should I actually go with this and then... Yeah, yeah, like that. Okay, I'm going to do it like that. Okay, this arm moving forward. And I'm going to show this arm slightly in the back here. 
And I'm going to try to tilt his head upwards slightly. And we see this bottom part of his chin. And then ear right here. Remember one third. Uh, the top of the ear. And let's try to remember that he has a bigger jaw. Shu has a bigger jaw. And let's do this, this, this. Oh, kind of put that chunkiness too much on there. Gonna emphasize that next a little bigger. Let's do this. Just imagine him saying like, come on, bro, or something like that. Oh gosh, this <laughs> smile. <laughs> this is something I still got to work on uh, from this angle is um, the mouths when they're opening. They're hard because they curve in a specific way and um, I haven't learned it uh, anatomically correct yet and I've just been doing it um, stylistically and I need to learn how to do it anatomically correct so I can alter what I want stylistically. I cannot stress enough how important the basic anatomy is, the basic real anatomy is. Because anytime someone says, I don't need to know real anatomy, that is absurd. Because I went through that stage myself and I completely regret it. Do not say that. The way someone grows is being open. You got to be open and got to be willing to learn. And, um,. Basically, I would like to say that, uh, like, so to someone who says, I don't need real anatomy, I can just learn anime anatomy. Oh, okay. Well, what is anime anatomy based on? The true structure of anime anatomy, real anatomy. So, wouldn't it be good to know real anatomy? Because you're not going to be able to, it's, it's, it's just not, I'm not saying learn all the muscles and all the names, but learning that there are shapes for these very dominant muscles that you should learn and structure of a skull. Learning the structure of a skull will really help you learn why everything works the way it does. So just remember that. I know I harp on that a lot, but it's because it's a mistake that I made. And I'd like you guys to not fall into the same, um, same loop I did. So... Do do I get paid for this? Is is that your question? Do I get paid for this manga? All right. Got this here. And now let's frame it. This sketch page took a little longer than I wanted. Um, yes, I do get paid for this. I'm published with North Caesar. Um, links should be in the description. But yes, I do get paid for this. Uh, before you ask, uh, I don't think I'm allowed to disclose, let you guys know exactly how much I make. I'm under NDA for that. So, uh, But yes, it's enough to live off of. Let's just put it that way. And it will only get better from here. All right, now da 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 I do that to turn the mask off because I hate that mask. I merge these line art layers, turn them down to about 20 or lower, depending on how thick and hard my sketches are. Make sure I'm on the right pen, go to this layer, and we are ready to start inking, but let me, that means the stream's almost over, guys. Stream's almost over, but I'm going to ink a little bit. Um, let's see, Barbara's, yeah, yeah, I'm drawing on it as I'm watching your stream. I really like it, but somehow it made me realize even more how much I have to improve. Yes, exactly. Sometimes we get in this mindset of even if we know it, we don't know it. 
we know we need to improve and we think for some reason once we get this one product it will make us be able to do art easier but the blunt truth is like we already know that that's not the case and but for some reason in our mind we can't get out of our heads that we think it will help us do art better but the truth is someone who is a pro like talk let, ask yourself this this question anytime you start thinking this if there was a piece of paper and a pencil that's all how much better would Takashi Obata be able to draw the same drawing on that piece of paper than you? That puts things in perspective for you. Or just say your favorite artist. What can my favorite artist do with this piece of paper that I can't? Basically, they would be able to create something that you think would look amazing. So we need to learn how to hone our skills and learn how to take advantage of what we have the best we can. Because someone could take a piece of freaking printer paper and a pencil and you can get that so cheap and then make something that looks on the quality of a fully professional manga on that. And you could. There's no doubt. So, um, anyways, uh, did it. but yeah, I'm glad you're liking it. Um, the iPad Pro is honestly super cool. It's, it's ridiculously cool. But um, as for the glossy kind of, yeah, the Apple Pencil has some weight to it. I saw that on your Instagram. Apple Pencil has some weight to it, but, you know, you kind of get used to it. kind of get used to the whole flow of it. At first, I was kind of like, oh, this is hard to control, all this stuff. But you do get used to it. And, um, yeah, it, it gets a little better as you go. Because you're, especially if you come from a Cintiq or something, you're like, you're comparing it to that constantly. Uh, do you pay for Yes. Who am I published under? Norse Caesar at NorseCaesar.com. You can also check them out in the description below. There should be a link to the projects. I am the artist for Arms of the Dragon and Ordinal Tempest. I'm an artist for two series that are currently published with them. So... Yep, and you can read um, uh, the ah, keep up. You can read the preview chapters of both series on their website. It's about six pages. Each chapter is twenty-two pages, and the last chapter or installment of Arms of the Dragon that just came out was forty-four pages. It was a double chapter. So, um, how many manga have you drawn so far? Is this your first one? No, um, I've drawn one complete one shot. I've drawn one other series for another company. And then um, I was just short of a volume before I kind of went and did my own thing. And then uh, I got started on um, Arms of the Dragon. So this would be my second, no, third series that I really did. Depends if you count the one shot as a series, but it's either my uh, my second or or third series that I've done, and then Ordinal Tempest is my fourth, um, or third, however you want to look at it. But yeah, but I got published uh, for the first time when I was like, I think twenty five. I made my first publication. Maybe it was twenty. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, um, let me see. Let me see here. How many? Okay. The, my biggest discouragement is uh, I wouldn't be able to make a living for it. Um, your biggest discouragement is you wouldn't be able to make a living with it. Um, I'm not going to lie. It is very hard to get into an industry like this and make a living. It is very hard. Um, but basically, if you want it, you'll get it. The, like, let's put it this way. The entertainment industry, um, you may find out, if you get good at drawing, you may find out that manga or comics isn't necessarily what you want to do. The deadlines are crazy, okay? 
So it may not be what you want. Um, but you may end up finding out that there's other things in the art field that you would want to do and you'd still be able to use those skills you learned. Um, and y trust me, what it, the entertainment industry is blowing up. I mean, you got video games, you got movies, like there's so much concept stuff that you have to do for video games, movies, um, like, and a lot of that um, is nowadays you should know 3D art and stuff like that. But I mean, I'm not doing that because I'm just in, I'm, I'm just into comics. So um, I probably, I might learn it one day when I have the software, but for right now, I'm just sticking with 2D stuff. But if you want it, you can do it. it but let's just say it will take a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work. A uh, nice little quote that I heard one time that I'm not, I don't think I'm quoting it properly is, um, whatever amount of energy or uh, hard work you think it will take, that is only, I think they said either one third or half the amount of work it will actually take. I, it may have even been less than that, but they let's just say one third. It, that's one third of the amount of time or hard work it'll actually take. So it takes a lot of, you know, a lot of hard times. I don't know how to, you don't know how to do it. How to do what? By the way, the manga. By the way what manga is this? This is Arms of the Dragon. You can check us out at northseizer.com in the description below. But, um, yeah. I'm going to get a little bit more inking done here. Um, I'm just going to take a wild guess here. You're saying, I don't know how to do it. If you're talking about you don't know how to do, like, get published or, or whatnot, for one, you have to make sure you're good enough to get published. How do you know you're good enough? Look at the people that you like the most and ask yourself, or the people that are even published, and ask yourself, am I that good? If you're not, then you may not be getting published. You may not be able to get published. So you have to look at the people around you, and that's that's your, your uh, gauge. Am I that good? How to do it? Practice. Study. Um, learn. Treat it like a school uh, assignment. You, you have to learn this stuff and then reinforce it to memorize it. So, et cetera. You don't know how to show your work to a company. Um, first, you want to make sure you're good enough to even show your work to a company. You can research that stuff as you go. Uh, you have to find out what company you want to go to. Um, there's so many ways to actually find out how to do that. You can ask someone in the company. You can email the company and ask them, how can I submit a portfolio, anything like that. You have to take initiative. Nothing's going to come to you. You have to make sure you do it yourself. If you're looking to do concept design, you don't know how to get a hold of them, even though there's probably some sort of contact on their website, you may end up finding the contact when trying to email them to ask them um, how to send in your work. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's why customer service is there, you know, or maybe not even customer service, just service. <laughs> Their service is there. You can find out how to submit stuff to them by asking. Don't be afraid to ask. Just be nice. And remember that the way you portray yourself, no matter where it is, that will stick with you for the rest of your career. And I'm glad that I'm not even consciously like, doing anything good I'm just being me you know but <laughs> remember to be a good person work hard be humble and uh, no matter what it is you get try to work your hardest on it that's one thing my grandpa always told me was no matter what it is you do do it to the best of your abilities and that sounds kind of weird, like do a crappy job to the best of your abilities, but that 
I mean, that got me far. I actually learned a lot of business from Dairy Queen, the job that I used to be at. I learned a lot of business from them, um, how a business works. Uh, I learned how to be efficient time management because I became a manager there and I had to know how to, um, you know, deal with the employees. I had to know how to deal with customers. I had to know how to be efficient in a fast food restaurant because everything's so fast paced. And I learned a lot from it by trying my hardest, even though I hated the job. Because if you learn how to do something you hate and you learn how to do it good, why can't you learn how to do what you like really good? Something to think about. I, oh, by the way, if I'm sounding really intense, I'm not mad at anyone or rat, like busting anyone's balls. <laughs> It's just how I am. I'm just a little intense when it comes to hard work. If my lines seem a little weird right now, it's because I'm really hungry and my eyes are wobbling, my hands wobbling. <laughs> a life of a manga god. I really need to eat here, though. I'm going to show a bit of this under chin. Only a little bit, because this head's actually tilting down. Mm, I think this neck may be a little too thin on this right-hand side. It's funny, it seems like people stay around more <laughs> when I get into my weird, like, talks. I guess more than just the drawing, it uh, gives a little bit more content to the video, you know? Gives a little bit more reason to the video, more reason to stay around. If I wanted to make him look, see, there's so many things that you could do with emotions, with the, just the eyebrows and the eyes and the top, this part, the top of the eye. There's so much you, I could change this whole motion, and I'll show you how, to, from a little bit of this strange emotion that you're going to see here that should resonate with the audience that knows the first part of the series, um, but... I could change this whole thing from looking the way it does to looking a little bit more mellow if I drop these eyelids down. If I drop them down like this. I know it looks a little weird. I have to flush it out, actually. But basically, putting those eyelids down could really change the whole look. What kind of music is going on over here? See, right now I'm I'm in uh, work mode. I kind of just want to keep going, going, going. <laughs> And just for clarification, guys, me talking about this hard work stuff, I've gotten as far as I am now, and I'm going to keep pushing. And I will tell you, I have had the thought in my head of quitting so many times because it was such a hard journey. I mean, I'm not even where I want to be yet. But to get to where I am now... It's been such a ridiculous journey. 
I've thought about quitting many times. But your drive and your passion for it is the only thing that's going to keep you up. Because your drive and passion is the only thing that's going to be there when you're too tired to work. But your drive and passion will make you keep going that extra mile. So if you ever have doubts in your mind, you may it may just be them doubts. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't sit back and ask yourself the question, is this really what I want to do? There is that question, and it is very important. Because sometimes you may be like, well, is this, not do I want to quit drawing, but is this the specific art field I actually want to go into now that I'm doing it? This may not be what I want, but you got to realize that every art field is going to have something um, really intense about it that you didn't expect to come from it. You know, every art field is going to have that. So... And nowadays, you can actually look stuff up. Like, they actually tell you um, concept art isn't exactly what many people think it is. And you find out something else, and you're like, oh, uh, okay, dang, I actually want to be a character artist. So you actually find that out. So there's a lot of research you can do. Do research. Find out if it's actually what you can do. You know, like, try to find out how long it might take to finish a page. Can you do that? And I'm also going to say that just because you may not be able to finish a page right now in enough time doesn't mean you couldn't do it in the future. There was a time when I tried to make a deadline when I was still really, I was younger, and I wasn't really young, but I was younger, and I tried to make a deadline, and I worked so hard to make the deadline for this competition that I worked myself, ugh, it's just remembering it now, I worked myself so hard that afterwards, I told myself I never want to draw a manga page ever again. <laughs> and now look at me, I'm about to have my first volume released. So, sometimes you may work yourself a little too hard, but doesn't, just because you think in your head, I never want to do this again, doesn't mean you actually don't want to do it again. But that's when the deep question comes into your mind, is this actually what I want to do in the field? I have such a strong passion about wanting to do manga. That's why I can keep on doing it. I mean, not saying you don't, but I'm saying that that there's there's a certain type of passion you have to have for the creation of it. You have to kind of like the pain. Also, you can condition yourself for this stuff. Um, if you say, "Well, I'm not, I, I'm not used to drawing that many hours a day. I don't know if I can do it." You can, you can learn. Um, I learned to do it. So, uh, I used to not. Let's let's put this part into perspective too. Uh, what I'm saying there is, when I was seventeen. I wouldn't be able to draw for more than, um, like, let's say, it, 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 there's a point where I couldn't draw more than about an hour without getting really tired. And, like, I would get really tired, and it was just, I, I don't know, that was my limit back when I was younger. And, you know... Now look at me. I can. The longest I've ever drawn in a row was twenty six hours. Of course, I went pee and I ate really quick. I didn't really do anything in between eating, but yeah, twenty six hours. He will. Oh, is there some comments in here? Oh, what the heck? Someone <laughs> sent me a super chat. Thank you, Pelo Head Creations. That's my first super chat. Thanks, man. Thanks so much. Like, seriously, I, like, I don't know if I sound unsincere right now. Um, because I, I really am. 
Thanks, man. Your pillow head creations my first super chat there it will forever be on YouTube thank you very much man <laughs> and when you get this volume Please get the volume. <laughs> when you get this volume, you can look at this page and be like, dude, I watched this guy write my name my, my username on this page. <laughs> I don't know how. Like show my work to a company. Um, let me look through these. I kind of just got distracted by the super chat. Thanks again, man. I, thanks. You forgot one of the things you're gonna be confident to. Don't go in like um um um. <laughs> go like. You know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um. And see, you have to have a really good balance between. You made a good point there, Pillowhead. You have to have a good balance between confidence and cockiness. Because cockiness can, I mean, okay, there's the really good people that are cocky and they have a reason to be cocky, but that doesn't mean they should be. But they are successful because they're good. Their cockiness doesn't really have anything to do with it. But for someone who's not that crazy good and you're cocky, it will blind you to how bad you are. So you want to have a good balance between knowing where you stand and then if you're trying to present something, stand a little bit above that to try to sell yourself as being a little bit more. You don't want to come off as too too timid. Because there's a lot of people in the industry that if you, you start talking about pricing, you may be able to get a higher price for your artwork that you deserve. And if you um, don't do your research and you get asked for a commission, um, you may end up underpricing yourself and the person will be like, damn, I just made a steal. Oh, sorry, YouTube police. Crap. Hey, no problem, Captain. Captain F Fur Threesco. <laughs> no problem. I'm glad I could help. How many hours do you usually spend drawing per day nowadays? Um, it really depends. Um, sometimes I'll take a day off and I'll draw anyways. <laughs> but uh, during, let's just say it, it really varies. Um, let's just say six hours is the minimum normally, and then maximum is you know like. 12 hours 12 um that's not the maximum the maximum can go much higher depending on how much sleep i get so how long have you been drawing manga and how long does it take you to do oh you to be be this good <laughs> let me clarify i don't think i'm good that good and then um <laughs> Because I'm, I'm always looking like I have manga in front of me. Uh, right now I'm looking at a CGI um, poster in front of me. And it's just mind-bafflingly better than my art. And that's why I always say that. And I'm, I'm honest. I'm serious when I say this stuff. But anyways, I've been drawing manga. Uh, and I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. As much as I would like to say I've been drawing manga since I was 15... No. The very first manga I ever drew, I was about... Okay, it was one page, and it was of Naruto, and it was when I was 19. After that, I didn't draw manga for a little while. My first 
Uh, wait, no, 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 that timeline's not going well together. I was 19 when I left. So my first, okay, my first page, I think was, I was 17, my first page, and I didn't even ink it, okay? Um, I know I'm not drawing, but let me just really quickly put this out there. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get the timeline right. So I think that was like 18 or 17, and then my first uh, manga that was more than that, that was actually, you know, like page after page, turned out to be um, 44 pages, and that was all pencil. I didn't ink it. It was on printer paper, and I did that when I was 19. And by the way, it looked like trash, and I still have it somewhere in this room I'm in right now. Um, I'll have to show you guys sometime, maybe in a stream or something, show you some of my old art in this room. Let me know if you guys are interested in that, by the way. Um, and then, so, I've only really been drawing manga, <coughs> sorry, I've only been really drawing manga since, uh, there, there's like drawing manga and then there's drawing manga seriously. I've only been drawing manga since I'm nine, since I was 19. I was drawing before that, but I didn't actually start creating pages and panels till I was 19. And then I didn't start drawing manga, actual manga pages seriously. And I can't even think of the timeline. If I would have to guess, I would say, I'm trying to think of when I actually created my, my like, and, this, and most of these weren't even finished pages. I think I was, I was 20, I was 20. I created my first one shot when I was 20. My finished one shot. 